This is a power series and A equals 5 here. A equals 5. So Now, there's, there's not much difference between the method for this one and the previous one. You've just got to be careful with the algebra when you're cancelling off. So, consider, please. The limit of the following ratio. Okay, note instead of just x here, x to the n, x to the n plus 1, I've got x minus 5 all to the n plus 1. So again, I can cancel off. In fact, some of you may want to skip this step. I'm going to cancel off here. I'm just going to have an absolute x minus 5 left. Now, what about these guys here? Well, again, I'm multiplying by reciprocals. So I'll get something... A little like this. And it's just a matter of, of um, simplifying. Now, those minus 1 to the end, minus 1 to the n plus 1s, can anyone tell me why are they going to disappear? Why can I just, just get rid of these straight away, these, this and this? Or just absolute values. If you take the absolute value, it's got to be 1, right? Sure, yeah, sure. Yep, that, that, that's fine as well. And why can I take the absolute values away from the n and the n plus 1? Well, because n's large and positive. So I can actually get rid of those absolute values and come up with something like this. So what's the limit? Limit's going to be 1. So now all I really need to do is find out what x values make this strictly less than 1. OK, so this is our, our limit of our ratio. We want to find the x values that make that row less than 1. Less than 1. So how, how can we make this less than 1? Well, just choose, like, so ch choose an x value. Well, x equals 5 will make this less than 1. So let's form some sort of interval. So absolute x minus 5 is going to be less than 1 when... And this is true. So all you need to do is rearrange that, add 5 to the, to the bottom right-hand side, and rearrange. So if I add 5, I'm going to get this. That's my interval. That's my interval. So for, for all x points in that interval, my, t uh, my um, power series converges. It makes sense. It's well defined. We can do things with it. So let's make a conclusion. Our power series converges
for all x in this interval. So who can tell me what's the radius of convergence going to be for this problem? 1, right? Because if you draw this interval, just look at half the, half the length of the interval, right? Now, what happens at x equals 4 and What happens? Well, let's find out. So let's go up here, plug in x equals 4. So this is one, one, one um, time when we do have to actually just sub in. So that's going to be um, minus 1 to the n all over n. All right. What's going to happen to these two things? Well, it's a squared, so they're just going to go to 1. What does this series do down the bottom? Sigma 1 on n. Does it converge or diverge? It diverges, right? So in other words, f of 4, but it's got no meaning. It doesn't, it's not well defined. What about at x equals 6? So I go up here, plug in x equals 6, and I'm going to get something like this. Times 1 to the n, which is just 1. What about this series down here on the bottom? It's an alternating series. Does it converge or diverge? It converges, right? This is an alternating series that converges. Leibniz test. Or AST. I won't put in all the details. So what does it mean? It means these points are in the domain and this point, but not this point because this series diverges. So you have a bit of a weird situation where one of the endpoints is in the interval, the other one's not. 